The room here can cost you more than 3,000 US dollars. Can you imagine? I got a drink, traditional Turkish coffee. It helps you to beat hangover. Eating in Turkey is one of the best things you can do. in my new episode and I hope you like it and enjoy it until the end. In the next couple of days I will be showing you must visit places in Istanbul in Turkey because the Turkish cultural capital I'd say is rich with historical sites that you shouldn't miss in your trip and I hope you enjoy the tour with me. So now we are in front of the most famous and the most expensive hotel in Istanbul. Inside is a real traditional Turkish style. You can have a look. The room here can cost you more than 3,000 US wow. dollars. Can you imagine? One of the largest and oldest covered bazaars in the world, the Grand Bazaar is 30,700 square meters with over 60 streets and alleys and 4,000 shops. In these jewelers shops filled with gold, silver and precious stones, you can find all sorts of valuable handicraft accessories from antique jewelry to modern pendants. In 2014, it was listed number one among the world's most visited tourist attractions with 91,250,000 annual visitors. Today, the Grand Bazaar is a thriving complex employing 26,000 people, visited by between 250,000 and 400,000 visitors daily, and one of the major landmarks of Istanbul. Just think about these numbers. Which market in the world can compete? Today, the Grand Bazaar is 554 years old. When you are first time here, it's super easy to get lost in the variety of products and shops. A walk through the bazaar is a journey among enchanting scents of spices, dazzling colors, hypnotizing sounds, beautiful handicrafts, and of course, the tempting smell of Turkish coffee. I got a drink, traditional Turkish coffee. You know, it has a really rich taste, like really strong, rich aroma of coffee beans. And it's my first time trying this kind of kind of coffee. I tried different kinds of coffee in different countries, but Turkish coffee is really a great one to try. I added some sugar inside, so it was like uh, not so strong for me. It has no milk at all. It's just coffee. Here, you can see street vendors sell simit or gevrek in Turkish. 
people in Turkey eat it for breakfast with a traditional Turkish coffee. And here is a stall with Turkish sweets. Look how many fresh veggies are in the street. Turkish cuisine is one of the most varied in the world. It is considered as the third richest cuisine after the French and the Chinese gastronomy. Turkish cuisine is divided into three main ones. The Western and Turkish Aegean cuisine is based on the remnants of the Ottoman court and the Greek cuisine with less use of spices and with abundant seafood. The main dishes of this region are dolmas, metze and seafood. The cuisine of the Black Sea is heavily based on the products of the sea and finds its influence in the Balkans and Slavic cuisine. The main dishes of this region are pites, fish, dry beans and cheese. Anatolian and southeast of Turkey cuisine is known for its kebabs, its metze, spices and desserts including the famous baklava. Two qualities distinguish Turkish ice cream – hard texture and resistance to melting. Vendors often tease the customer by serving the ice cream cone on a stick and then taking away the dondurma with the stick by rotating it around before they finally giving it to the customer. Really, Turkey is a country of delicious food. I really enjoy my time of eating here. Eating in Turkey is one of the best things you can do. Borex, kebabs, mounties. When I'm saying that, my mouth gets wet. Honestly, I consider Turkish cuisine one of the most delicious in the world. Their Turkish kebab is number one. So these ones are fried Turkish pancakes with mushrooms inside. It's very good. I ordered with mushrooms inside. So really nourishing. And I also got a typical drink from Turkey. It's actually uh, famous in Russia as well. It's called Iran and it's um, made of fermented goat milk. Actually, I like it because it's like really nice and sour taste. And it also helps you to beat hangover. If you're drunk the next morning, you drink this one and no hangover after. It's a little bit windy here, so I got hot tea. It's called chai um, in Turkish. So they serve chai in this kind of uh, glass. It's not really convenient to drink it, but yeah, it's traditional again. With over 110,000 square meters of construction on 250,000 square meters of land, it sure is an impressive palace on the Bosporus. The parliament decided to use Dalmabahçe as a presidential palace. Thus, Ataturk stayed and received foreign guests here during his visits to Istanbul. He died in the palace on the 10th of November in 1938. Later it was converted into a museum in 1952. The palace is consisted of three main sections, administrative apartments, ceremonial hall and imperial harem. There are two monumental gates giving access to the main garden of the administrative part, Treasury Gate and Imperial Gate. Dolmabahçe Palace rises on two floors above a basement. Local stone and some marble was used in its outer walls, bricking the inner walls and parquet wood on the floors. It has a European design with a neo-baroque style, typical of the Ottoman tradition of the mid-19th century. Unfortunately, it is prohibited to film inside, 
so I will continue my story about the palace outside. Originally, there was a shallow bay where the Ottoman fleet used to anchor their ships. After the 17th century, the coast was filled in and converted into a nice garden where the sultans used to relax enjoying the views. The palace has 285 rooms, 46 reception halls and galleries, 6 Turkish baths and 68 toilets. The Suleymaniye crowns one of Istanbul's seven hills and dominates the Golden Horn, providing a landmark for the entire city. The truly staggering size of the Suleymaniye Mosque is one of its most distinctive features. Built by the legendary architect Mimar Sinan, it is known as one of his masterpieces and his largest design. It is not just the opening size that is impressive, but also the elegantly decorated design. It took eight years to build. It was completed in 1557 as tribute to Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. Suleiman was the longest reigning sultan of the Ottoman Empire and is regarded by some as a second Solomon because of the harmony and justice under his rule. Do you see these ostrich eggs? They keep insects attracted by candles and oil lamps away. It is believed that ostrich eggs emit odors which insects such as spiders find unbearable, but the smell is said to be undetectable by the human nose. Now I will show you the coolest spot in town. There are hundreds of ancient cisterns hidden underneath of the streets and houses of Istanbul. Of the two that are open to the public, the Basilica Cistern is the largest and Istanbul's most unusual tourist attraction. Why? Let's have a look inside. After descending into the underground water facility via a flight of stairs, Visitors can take a stroll on the concrete walkways, enjoying the subdued lightning and the cool temperatures. This immense underground water container was built during the reign of Emperor Justinian I in 532 to meet the water needs of the Great Palace. The cistern can hold 80,000 cubic meters of water. The roof is supported by 336 marble columns, mostly in Ionic or Corinthian styles, each measuring 9 meters in length. Make sure you walk all the way to the far left-hand corner of the cistern to see the two Medusa hats. Both hats are occasionally used as column bases, one positioned upside down and the other tilted to the side. If you like this video, please put your thumb up, subscribe to my channel and share this with your friends. I appreciate your comments and your likes and your feedback. In your comments, please write if you would like to visit this city and what are the most beautiful and interesting places that you like to visit in the city. Any ideas, any comments that you want to share with me are more than welcome.